Hey, this is uh, Jay Harwood. It's the latest edition of uh, Amazing Conversations with Mr. Howard Johnson. Hall of Famer Howard Johnson. How's that sound? Mets Hall of Famer, Howard How does that sound? Oh, man, Jay. It's still, I still think about it like it's a dream or something, but uh, I'm super excited about it. Uh, my family's pumped about it and looking forward to being in New York for that ceremony. Yeah, June 3rd against the Blue Jays, 4 o'clock. I hope, I hope the place is packed. All right, I got yeah, some really too. tough questions for you, Howard. You know, <laughs> yeah, I bet. People have names, have fields named after stadium, named after. How does it feel? One of your former teammates, Keith Hernandez, named his cat after you, Haji. That's right. How does it make you That's feel? That's right. Pretty special, Jay, because you don't know how, how much he loves that. Maybe you do know how much he loves that. I do. Guy. Yeah, so I must have good standing with him. So we, we talk, we talk quite often. Like, with 17 of these years, it's got to be, I don't want to jinx anything, but Haji's alive and kicking. So, I mean. Uh, Haji's yeah, alive but, and kicking. But it, that's better than a stadium, right, Howard? <laughs> much better. Much better than a stadium. Because it gets mentioned all the time. Yes, right? yes. But I don't know if people know how it came about. It's just when everybody called you and uh, Keith used to call yeah. you Haji all the time. And that's how yeah, so it came up with um, – Back in the day, the Giants had that kicker. Remember Ali Haji? Ali Haji. So that's how that's how it came up. So I I was called Haji. I was called Sheik. He called the cat Haji. He used to call me Haji all the time. Still does. Hey, Howard, let me talk about the other Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. Um, Scott Rowland gets elected. Okay. Yeah. Great player. A good friend of ours, David Wright. To me, before the injuries took place. He was Scott Rowland. I mean, I mean, you know, oh. the surgery. Could you compare the two? I mean, better, uh, <clears throat> better, better than Scott Rowland. If uh, you know, if Scott, I mean, Dave, David's career got cut short. We all know that, but he's definitely has a resume, in my opinion. I mean, a lot of people probably share it too, that uh, he's a Hall of Fame player. I mean, Whether he's turned forty now. I mean, he really. Yeah, with all yeah. the back and the neck stuff, he shouldn't really be playing. But, you know, I think he's put it in the background a little bit now. He's with Molly in California with the three kids. But, it, you know, when I, that was my first reaction when I heard Scott Rowland got elected. And again, no disrespect to Scott Rowland. But for me, yeah, no disrespect. Just, no. there's a little touch of sadness because you look back and if David had stayed healthy, what could that have been? You know, that was, you know, exactly. that was my feeling. And we all, you know what, Jay? We, it's not like we're someone is thinking about it right now. I mean, we've all thought that that's what David was, you know, like he was on his way. The track was on its way, and you know, injuries are a part of it. I get it. Uh, it took care of me pretty good too. Uh, father time, all that stuff. So, I think uh, when his time comes, I, you know, hopefully he gets a shot at it. I think I think it's going to happen. Maybe he's going to be on the ballot next year. So. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll get a good idea probably next year. When you coached with the Mets, two other guys on the ballot, you saw Billy Wagner throw a lot. Billy moved mm -hmm. up to almost 69%. What do you remember about Billy, how he threw when you were there? Ah, throwing BBs, man. I mean, I, I used to watch him pitch. And as a hitting coach, I'm thinking, okay, well, how would I, how would I try to game plan facing Billy Wagner? And it, he was tough because – he threw like low. His delivery was low, so the ball kind of like jumped on you, and it always it always kind of planed out like up in the zone, which is a little unusual for power for power pitchers. Usually, it's a four seamer that that tends to be either like really high or like or like down at the knees, and he had more of a side to side action on that. His, of course, he had his slider, so he was he was just really tough. I mean, competitor. And I hope he gets into it. It looks like he's probably going to be in next season. Yeah, I hope so. And and one of your former pupils, Carlos Beltran, yeah. uh, he, he, he he came on at about 46%, 47%. I noticed some controversy around him. But for me, I've been here a long time, and nobody had a better Met career or, or his numbers are just out of reach. And hopefully Father Time will be, be kind to Carlos and the other stuff can fade in the background a little bit. I mean – for me, he's a Hall of Fame player. Yeah, I mean he's he's played played a long time. First of all, that's that's a that's important. That's on his side. Uh, switch hitter, a lot of homers. I'm not sure how many he ended up with, but um, I mean that's not easy to do what he did. And when you look at a guy like Chipper Jones, just switch hitter, 
probably I don't maybe comparable home runs. I don't I'm not sure. I have to look it up, but I think I think Carlos proved himself that a center fielder, switch hitter, champion, you know, a team that won the National League East got to the NLCS against Cardinals. Then he went to Houston, they won over there. So he just he's been he's been in the right place at the right time and and I think things may be maybe lining up for him. We'll just have Hopefully to see. Hopefully in your future you deserve it. Howard, I, I just want—I know Met fans want me to ask, uh, how is your grandson Tanner doing? He threw it the first yeah. ball at the old Timers Day game two years ago. Horrific accident. I mean, he's made yeah. quite a rebound, right, with his foot. He really has, Jay. He's—he's he's doing well, man. For you know, he's going to be how old this year? Four, five. He's going to be four years old, I think. So he's—he's—he's he's, he's growing. He's getting bigger. He runs around with with no shoes on. You know, it's it's awkward because he doesn't have any toes. You know, part of his foot's gone. But he can see the kid moving around and trying to be normal, and he just keeps up, you know. So I look at it like if, if, if tragedy is going to happen to somebody, a kid, let it be really young because they don't have much memory of it, and they're going to learn how to maneuver life, you know, with, with that kind of handicap. So we'll – we got our. We're always praying for him. He played little league baseball last year. He played t ball. Good for him. Good for him. Yeah, he wears a little shoe filler in his in his shoe, which is pretty cool. And uh, you know, we just love watching him out there. He love he loves life. It's how awesome. you know what I remember about that summer is how your teammates, the eighty six guys, came to your beck and call. Daryl unsolicited yeah. has come down to help you. Roger, yep. Ronnie, and Keith on TV. It made you feel good. You know, in eighty six team. Oh. A lot of people thought we were nuts, but a good kind of nuts. And it's a bond. Oh, my gosh. What we did that year it keeps everybody together, don't you think? I mean, I, I like that, a good kind of nuts. That's 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 a good description of our team. A very close brotherhood, regardless of, like, what was happening on the field, good or bad. Um, the guys stayed together, you know, our bus rides. You know, we, we were very, very close on the bus, you know, laughing and joking, cutting up and everything. There are the plane rides, obviously, but it's kind of legendary. I mean, just a fun time. Guys played cards together, did a lot of things together. And, you know, it was before cell phones, so, you know, that's all you really had was each other. And um, the locker room was a lot of fun, too, to be around. He always went in there early. Keith would be in there, you know, playing his crossword. You know, he had the black coffee ready to go. And just watching guys, you know, prepare for the game. And it was just, a, it was just an awesome sight. I mean, 116 wins is pretty good. That year, uh -huh. pretty that's, good. That's really good. I just talk about your career for a second. You know, you win a championship with the Tigers in '84, but you really weren't a prime. I mean, you were there, but you weren't there. And then, and any, it comes to the Mets. And you remember, I remember the, the stuff in the papers. You came there that you'll never adapt to New York. You're not. You're a soft player. Uh, you're. You, you don't have what it takes to make a New York. Do you remember mm -hmm. some of the stuff that was written about you then? Oh yeah, of course I remember. Um, you know, Sparky, Sparky Anderson was tough on young players. And that team we had in 84 was pretty solid. And that was my first full season. I'd had a cup of coffee in 82 and 83. 84 was my first full year, and the team was, was pretty good. And he used me quite a bit that year. Actually, I had 350 at-bats, I think, something like that. So I had quite a few. You know, so I was out there. Um, but he, he really favored the older player, the veteran player. And I get it. Um, he just, that's just his, that, that was his preference. And so, you know, when I got traded to the Mets, Jay, uh, you know, he said some things about like that, like, you know, New York probably wouldn't be a good place for me. And, and that's, I don't know. I thought that was kind of unfair. I don't, I don't see why he had to say those things because he, he, there's no way he could know. I mean, obviously, I had ability, and I was going to a good team. I was going to the right manager, and he got Davey got the most out of me, and gave me an opportunity to play when Ray left, and you know things happened from there. So, I just I just did my part, whatever that was. If it, whatever role I had to play, I was going to play it. So after '86, you know, Ray, Ray leaves. Kevin Mitchell gets traded. I and mean, I forget when Wally got traded to the Pirates, but he was gone. So third base is, is your position now. And in the next coming years, 
three thirty thirty years, uh, three times over thirty home runs, thirty eight tops, led the league home runs in RBIs, two time All Star, two time Silver Slugger. What changed? I mean, did you just matter of getting a chance to play? Was that really what it was about? That was probably the biggest part, um, getting an opportunity to play. I remember, I remember when Ray left and, and uh, Mitch got traded, and basically I was the I was the guy. Um, and Davey told me, he goes, it's your, it's your job to lose. And I said, okay, that's all I need to know. And the year in 86, so I think I had 200 and maybe 25, 250 at bats, something like that. Not a ton, but I had 10 homers and stole 10 bases, I think, or 12 bases, hit 12 homers, something. And I think drove in 40 runs right around there. And I remember the media asking me, they go, what are your expectations? You know, now you're going to be an everyday player. And I honestly thought, man, I, I think I could hit 20 homers and drive in 80 and steal, steal 20 bases. I think I could do those things. And some of them were like questioned, like, well, what makes you think that? Well, I'm just, my bats are going to double. And I said, I set out to work that year, that 80, the winter of eight, after 86, you know, when time when you should be celebrating a championship, I was working, I was getting ready to, for 87. And I put my body through the ringer. I worked on my base stealing, I love, which I love to do. That was really my passion. I worked on that. I worked on my switch hitting. I knew that if I was going to play every day, that, you know, when we played St. Louis, Whitey was going to make me hit right-handed. I knew that. Jim Leland was going to make me hit right-handed. I knew that. So I worked as hard as I could on those weaknesses and turned them into strengths. And that year, my numbers were really solid from the right side and I was my I went 30 30 and and had an opportunity to drive in 100 runs and almost got there but it was pretty pretty awesome year one of my favorite games of all time was a game in Cincinnati I think you remember the yeah. game that uh, Parker drops a, you might have hit the fly ball right Parker dropped a fly ball in right field and you hit like a three-run homer in the in the 12th yep. or 13th inning that was, yep. um, you know, one of my favorite games. What do you remember about that game, George? I know that was cool because, you know, Dave Parker was a great outfielder. I mean, he did not – he probably dropped balls. You count them less than one hand, you know, in his life. And he drops this ball in the right field, tying run scores. We go to extra innings. You remember uh, that was the fight with Ray and, uh, you know um, – Eric Davis, remember they got in the, they got in that scuffle at third right. base. You remember his play then? Speaking about great plays, I think it was a three. And Gary was playing yeah. third base. Did you get thrown out in the fight or no? No, no, I was at shortstop. I, right. I, I I was over at short when Gary was at third. When, he, when, 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 Eric, when Eric went went into Ray, I was at shortstop. And Ray so. caught up and clocked him. Yeah, Ray clocked him. Ray, Ray, Ray was a Golden Gloves guy. He just he didn't. You remember when Mike attention. Tyson revisited camp that year? We, <laughs> we had more fights. In, I mean, I mean, we had five or six bench clearing brawls. Oh. I mean, remember Uncle oh, Bill? Bill got to a fight at first. The only time I see a coach get to a fight at first base, and I, and I got, I got to stop here. I, I forgot. How can I forget this? He used to torment poor Bill with the freaking hot foots. I mean, that's oh, you yeah. and Roger McDowell. Got him all the time, and and he, he, I could see it coming. Bill never saw it coming. Tell, tell him <laughs> what the secret of he was, a, he was an easy target, Jay. That's that, number one. You got to have a you got to have a subject that is oblivious to the, what you're trying to do to him. <laughs> and so <laughs> we did, that was number one, and Uncle Bill was always number one on that. So yeah, me and Roger used to put these things together where you use up. We started out with like a half a book of matches. So you get a book of matches, you take the staple out, and you had like two sheets of matches. So the first ones we did just had one sheet, wrapped them around a cigarette, got some gum, put it on there, some tape or whatever, lit the cigarette, which served as the fuse. And then it just worked its way up until it finally ignited. Then we started putting on both both sheets of those matches. So that thing was a monster. But you got on a coach's and, line one time, didn't you? Uh, yeah, we used to do that. Yeah, because the, the things started getting heavy because we had more matches. And so we had tape on there that would hold it on. So when he walk out to the, to the first base dugout, it wasn't going to fall off. And we, everybody's just looking at him like, here it comes, here it comes. 
Bam. And sure enough, man, that thing would fire off like a rocket. And then that was part of our video that that year, you and Roger telling the fans how to make a, yeah. a, a freaking hot foot. But oh what man, a, what a girl! Wearing great that guy. wearing that orange Bucks hat, Jay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, speaking of the Bucks, you know, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to give away your email, but I, it just, the football season's over. Your email is related to the Bucks. I don't say what it is. Um, Tom Brady, yes or no next year? What do you think? I'm not seeing it. I mean, the only reason why he might play is because of the divorce situation. Maybe, you know, financially it would help him. But I think he's got enough money. He's got Fox locked in his back pocket there with the 10 year thing, the broadcast. So he may be willing to just walk away. I, I just don't see it had to be the perfect situation for him. And it's going to be hard because the Bucks were a great team when he came. That was three years ago he came in. And changed everything and it still took a half a season to get it right and that's going to be tougher at his age but my gut is no he's not going to play that's that's just my gut but i could i mean on the other hand i could see him possibly coming back for one year how what am i i, I think i've told this to me one of my greater disappointments relates to you when you had your i think you're up to your third 30 30 season it was my goal to get you a commercial with Howard Johnson's restaurant. Oh. And I complete. I went to one in Clifton. Howard, I couldn't sell it. The wooden company still is there. I mean, how could I? That's a failure on my part. <laughs> I couldn't get Howard Johnson. Hey, I'm Howard Johnson here and Howard Johnson having an ice cream shake. I mean. That's right. I know. It's that? perfect. It's perfect. I mean, they're, 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 do, you, do you forgive me at all, though? Uh, Jay, I forgive you. I forgive you. I, I would have been fun. I know. We tried. We but, could, I mean, was it natural? It couldn't be more. It could be more natural than that. But Jay, but Jay, a, listen to this. Listen to this. Their phone number for reservations, their national phone number, was one eight hundred I go Hojo. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. That's that's like perfect setup. It's a layup. Did you ever call the number? <laughs> Any, I think my I think my agent tried to I, no I never called the number and said hey this is there is any Howard Johnson there's, there's one right on Route Three in Clifton where I live and I almost wanted to go in there and I, I have a Hall of Famer who wants to get some endorsement did I, and Howard is there any bike down where you guys live anymore or no 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 I you know what there is one I I think I've seen one on the 75 when we drive down to net from Nashville we see it I think there's one there off the 75 just past Gainesville. Howard, yeah, so me, there's you, only a few left. That's it. I know. Well, I haven't given up hope, Howard. I haven't given up hope. <laughs> Tell me. You're, not over you're, yet. It's not over yet, Jay. School, the batting school in Tampa and, and, and Nashville. Yep. Tell me, yep. what, what, is, what do you do at the school? I mean, it's not just baseball, right? No, it's not just baseball. We've got, we've got two fairly large soccer fields in there. They're 150 by 50, so... These two all-purpose fields, they use them, especially in the fall, winter, and spring when the weather's kind of dicey. Uh, you know, there's a lot of leagues that come in there that use soccer, lacrosse, football, whatever. You know, there's a lot of stuff happening. We've got batting cages uh, in the back. We have um, – we can use those, those fields for ground balls and throwing. There's a lot of pro guys that live in the area. They come in, in the morning. They work out. But what I do – my son and I, Glenn, he, he and I own it. He runs it full-time. That's his job. Um, we have travel baseball through there. We do lessons in there. So when I'm up there, um, I'm usually up there a week to 10 days. I'm doing lessons during that period of time and helping out Glenn and just trying to trying to promote promote the brand and, and, and keep building it. How would a fan, you know, what, if they wanted to find information, is there a box office or a PO number? How yeah. Yeah, they could go. They could just look on, online, Showtime Sports Academy. Uh, dot com. That's our that's our email or website, excuse me. And they can reach out and and contact people through that. They can book lessons or whatever. So those, it shows the availability. It, it's a nice setup. Uh, we love doing it. We teach a lot of kids in there. We've got some great coaching. We've got all the high tech stuff that we want uh, that anybody would really want. So. Uh, we're excited about it. It's, it's growing. It's a growing thing. How, how, in the midst of, I, I know I'm going to miss something. You've been a player, of course, um, a, a coach, my league manager, a scout. Yep. Did, you, did you sell hot dogs at it one time? No. 
You know, I've ate a few. I ate a few. You've eaten a few, a few, a few, eaten a few yeah. What was it with your history with the Mets and you did everything in the organization to be, you know, you know, your when Tanner grows up, you could be able to bring him to City Field and oh, be blocking Howard Johnson. I can't wait, Jay. That's gonna be that's gonna be something. Um, yeah, when I was I mean, with the Mets I loved it because I got a chance to experience, you know, every level. Um, I I had David Wright, I had Jose Reyes. Angel Pagan, I had a bunch of guys that came through the system um, at every level, which was so much fun, and I enjoyed it. I mean, every level was tough. I, You know, we all think that we're ready to coach in the major leagues right away, you know, when you're done playing, but it's not that simple. Um, it's helpful to go through it. It's helpful to go through the system. It's helpful to watch guys develop at every level, and so I, I liked it, and when I finally got an opportunity to coach, in the major leagues, I felt very, very prepared, and I was very excited about it. And um, it was still the highlights of my coaching career. Well, listen, June 3rd, it'll be a great day. You and uh, Mr. Al, Gary Cohn, Howie Rose, hope we'll have a full house. And, you know, long overdue, Howard. I'm glad this finally came about. Well-deserved, a good guy, and been a friend for a long time. And, and you know, all the best. And, Howard, I'm going to call you on the 25th of March. We'll talk about it later on when I get some more information. But thanks for your time in regards to Kim and Glenn and everybody. Will do. Kim says hello, and I uh, hope you're doing good up there, Jay. Okay? Yeah, thanks, Coach. Congratulations again with everything, okay?